Hi, how's it going? So, today's video. Um, in the comments, someone asked me if I could do a breakdown of uh, level 3 mission running and kind of what you're supposed to do, kind of fittings and stuff like that. And more than happy to do it. Uh, unfortunately, they weren't very specific on what type of missions. Now, I'm going to go on the basis that it's security missions just simply because. I believe that the uh, mining missions and the uh, logistics missions are fairly self-explanatory. Pick it up, take it to where it needs to go, drop it off, or go and mine me this much material and bring it in from a specific spot. So I don't think there's much by way of value that I can add to that. So I'm not going to cover off those kinds of missions. However, if it is something you want me to do, by all means, I'm more than happy to do it. Um, Today's video is specifically going to be focused around um, level 3 missions, specifically. The reason why I've gone for this is because currently, as of, uh, what, September 2020, just in case this is being watched in the future, um, currently at the moment, Alphas only have access to level uh, 3 missions, level 2, level, level 1, level 2, and level 3 missions. Um, so... This is kind of designed as, as as your way to kind of get into that. You may be using this to, to, to fund your way into a battleship. You may be looking at using this as a supplement to making money so that you can, I don't know, fund your accounts or just your way of having fun. So hopefully this video proves helpful. And if it does, I would really appreciate it if you could go ahead and press the subscribe button. Uh, we are very close to uh, a thousand subscribers. Um, so close it has come round so quickly I, I wasn't even expecting it so um for all those that have already subscribed i really appreciate it and um uh it's nice to know that there are that many people out there that enjoy this content as much as i do so um that's always good uh if the video does help like i said a subs uh, uh, hit and subscribe would be fantastic also if you press the like button it means that i know you enjoyed the content and it means that i know maybe you know can do some more of this stuff and work on other areas as well and cover those off so today's video is going to be a four part video you will notice some segments from this video in the other f in the other three sorry uh, so you may notice some of the segments from this in those as well this was mainly just because some of the tips and the tricks that i'm going to be going through in the first video will also be applicable to the other three what are in those other three those other threes are the the other three are race specific so in this video i'll be covering off one race in the next one i'll be covering off another and basically i'll go through kaldari galente minmata and mar and basically there are fits for all four races in battle cruisers that are more than capable of running level three missions they will also run level twos and if you can get them into the level ones they will also run the level ones so it is a fairly versatile ship the issue i can only see you having with the level ones is that i don't believe that i think i think there are some ship restrictions on on those so you may or may not be able to get into them so yeah that's that's kind of an overview of what's going to come so the next bit is getting into the actual ship and getting ourselves set up so we'll stop here and we'll jump over to the ship so be right back ready one two three go we're going to be running this in the cyclone this is the minmatar battle cruiser it is um bit of an odd looking ship if I'm honest with you not my most favorite I prefer the hurricane over the over the cyclone however this one is fairly versatile it does have a fairly decent output for DPS and for what we're using it for it is perfectly suited um, as you can see here one of its more prominent traits is it's got these like fin things on the front and a bit of a unique thing if you didn't know it uh, Mimata ships are actually named after weather mm. Hurricane, Cyclone, Maelstrom, Typhoon, Tornado. They're named after weather systems. So, bit of an odd one for you. But, yeah, um, the reason why we're using this ship is because of the bonuses it gets. So, you'll see here, Mimitar Battle Cruisers get a bonus to heavy missiles and heavy assault missile launcher rate of fire per level. And then an additional 7.5% bonus to shield booster amount per level. It's also got an additional roll bonus, which is not per level, of 25% bonus to missile velocity. 
It has got bonuses to command burst modules, but for the sake of this video, we will not be using command command links. So there, that is an option. However, for the for, for this video, we won't be using them. So uh, yeah, that's the ship. Okay, so fittings wise, this ship I've fitted with heavy assault missiles. The reason why I've gone heavy assault missiles is because we're going to use the uh, rapid. Uh, we're going to use the rate of fire bonus that this has got to its uh, to its benefit. This means that it is going to be firing a lot of missiles very quickly, which means it's going to burn down the targets. The reason why we've gone for that with this one is more specifically because uh, it wasn't as easy to get an Omni tank for this ship. Uh, which means that it does require the use of specific hardeners. So you'll see here it's got a kinetic and a thermal hardener. Now the reason it's got these two hardeners for, for uh, as it's currently set up is if it's running Garistus missions, they primarily do kinetic and thermal damage. So we have both kinetic and thermal armor, armor hardeners fit. If of course this changes and the mission that we pick up says that we actually need a different type of, uh, of resistances, we'll go ahead and we'll cater for those. But I'll show you how we find out that information in, in a second when we actually go to pick it up. Uh, so if you are doing this and you're not an alpha or you're, you've got more skills at your, your disposal and you can actually go ahead and upgrade these, then feel free to do so. You can squeeze more DPS out of this. You can also make the, the, the tank a little bit more robust, more, more robust by upgrading these as well. So by all means, feel free to upgrade this as you see fit. Um, but for the sake of running this as an alpha, this is the fit that I've gone for and it is it is fairly resilient with regards to what it can do. Um, you'll notice in its cargo hold, we're actually packing uh, all four variations of the um, ammo types. We've also got some random ammo in here, which shouldn't be in here. So we'll go ahead and we'll take that out now. Um, and this fit has been tested not only by myself but by some of the other people currently in the public channel they have gone ahead and they have tested this the only issue that they experienced was that there was there was some some areas where they struggled with capacitor but turning off the afterburner for a couple of seconds and letting that build back up again was more than enough and the output from this was enough to offset that dps anyway so um if you do find yourself struggling for capacitor go ahead and turn the afterburner off just make sure that you've got momentum and you keep your ship moving other than that you should find yourself more than capable to run anything and and survive anything that you may encounter so this is the this is the mimitar build and this is the ship that we'll be using so we'll go ahead now and we'll pick up the uh the mission we're going to start by talking to the agent and we're going to request a mission and she's going to tell us that we've got to do the smugglers interception now it says here that we're going to be encountering the garistus pirates you can see here it says garistus and it also mentions them just here now before we go ahead and accept this mission, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to copy the uh, the name of the of the mission itself, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to open up EVUNI. The link for this is in the description along with the fit for the ship, which I'll explain to you how to recover in just a second. So you paste the mission name into here, and then you hit search. It will come up with a number of different options. We want to select level three because that's what we're doing and it's then gonna give you a breakdown of the mission. Now you can see here that it says that it is a level three, retrieve 10 militants from the personal transport wreck. We're going up against Serpentis. The best damage to deal is kinetic over thermal. The best damage to resist is thermal over kinetic. The e war that we're going to be encountering is dampening, which means it's going to be reducing our locking range. And with this here, if, for instance, we came in, we, we, we'd selected this mission and it said here that damage to resist was kinetic thermal, this would mean that we would want to prioritize having kinetic resistances over thermal. They're going to do more thermal damage than kinetic. They're going to do more kinetic damage than thermal. If this first one here said EM, it means they're going to do more EM damage than whatever the alternative is. So whichever one is first is the one that you want to prioritize. If it says that thermal, in this case, is the primary damage, make sure you've got tank for thermal. 
If it says that EM is the more dominant damage, then make sure you're tanking for, th uh, for, for, for EM. Similarly, with the missiles, it says here that using kinetic missiles is going to do the most amount of damage. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to make sure that we're using kinetic missiles. This means that we're essentially going to be killing them a lot faster. Down here, you can see what we're going to encounter. So in the first pocket, we've got six frigates, one cruiser. The cruiser is using sensor damage. In group two, which is 65 to 75 kilometers away, we've got an additional four frigates and another two cruisers. Once we've cleared this group, we go into the second pocket and we've got three frigates and two cruisers. The second group is the two industrials, five cruisers and one battle cruiser. It shows this here for the L, it shows that it drops the 10 militants. This means that we have got, once, once we kill the industrials, the loot that we require will be inside those. Finally down here in group three, we've got nine frigates. So it's it's telling you what the what the groups are split up into so you can prioritize which ones you need to take out first. I'd always recommend kind of leaving these till last and focus on the smaller stuff first just so that you can get them out of the way. However, if you do find that you're taking more damage than you can handle, by all means go ahead and switch that up and take out the, uh, the battle cruisers first. If this says that they're using webs or they're using uh, warp scramblers or anything like that, make them a priority unless they're a trigger. And the way you would identify a trigger is it will have an X on it. And for this, we're gonna go back two steps because um, the one that I was on actually had it on being shown. You see here, it's got an X on it. This means that it is the trigger. If you destroy these, it will trigger the next wave of ships to come in. So if you are looking on this and you see one that's got an X, leave them until last, because otherwise you are going to force the next spawn into you, and that is ultimately then going to potentially cost you your ship. So bear that in mind when you are doing this. If you see an X next to their name, make sure that you are destroying them last, not first. Otherwise you are potentially gonna get yourself into a firefight that you might not be able to handle. So. We've got an overview of the uh, of the mission. We know what damage we need to be taking. Uh, we know what damage we need to be dealing. We also know what damage we need to be tanking for. To get this fit, it will be on an EVE workbench, which will be linked in the description. To recover this, simply click on the link and it will take you to this website here. You will see the um, you'll see the ship just here instead of instead of this. You'll see the cyclone there. All you have to do is click here where it says EFT and you'll see the fit come up. Highlight everything that's in there by pressing Control and A, and then click Copy to Clipboard. It'll tell you that the fitting has now been copied to your clipboard. You can go ahead and close this and minimize the window if you need to. Open up Fittings in Game, and then over here where you've got your skins and browser, go ahead and click on the browser, and then click on Import. Here you see an option that says Import from Clipboard. Click that, and it will bring the fit into the game so you can go ahead save simulate or buy all depending on which option you'd like um, then once you've done that you, you've essentially got the fit there ready for if you need to replace the ship or if you decide that you you want to save the ship to maybe share it with a friend or something like that one of the other things that we have currently got in our cargo hold as well is a mobile tractor unit when I land on the grid, when we get into the mission itself, I'll go ahead and I'll drop this and this will be my anchor point. It will then go ahead and scoop up all the loot so that I don't have to go around picking everything up for either myself or if I'm doing this in, in a team, I can, I can have the team member warp in and they can go straight to where that was and pick up the cargo container and the wrecks. But you'll see that when we get in there. Um, so we'll go ahead, we'll accept this mission now and we'll go from there. Okay, right, before we get into any missions, I'm about to give you some of the most valuable advice I can think of giving you, and it's this. You are at some point going to encounter griefers while running your missions. What's gonna happen is they're gonna scan down either your MTU or your ship, at which point they're gonna warp into your mission and they're either gonna shoot your MTU or they're gonna start looting your wrecks. You are gonna feel tempted to shoot them because they're potentially gonna be in something much smaller than you. Maybe in a frigate, maybe in a rookie ship, maybe in a hauler. You don't know. But ultimately, they're going to come into your mission and they are going to do something to initiate aggression. If you fire on them, you are essentially opening up combat on yourself because you activate what is called an aggression timer. 
This is a 15 minute window where that pilot that has walked into your mission and engaged your mobile tractor unit or stolen your wreck or whatever they've done to engage you in combat, they have got 15 minutes where they can come and actively shoot you. If you engage them, they will nine times out of 10 either A, warp off and reship, or B, let you destroy them and then warp off and reship. At which point they will come back in a much bigger ship that is more than prepared and ready to kill you. The main reason that they're able to do this is because most of the time when they land into the mission they've got two modules fitted to their ships. The first one is a ship scanner, the second one is a cargo scanner. The reason why they have these two modules fitted is because it will give them a complete picture of what you've got fitted to your ship, what ammo you're carrying, and how much capacitor you've got available. This gives them an idea of how they need to tank their PvP ship before they come in and relieve you of your ship. Um, they can also do a bit of background checking on you by uh, putting your character's name into things like Z-Kill and into Eve Who. This will give them a bit of background into your character's PvP capabilities, age, skill history, ship types that you've used, recent losses, recent kills. This gives them a picture of your capabilities as a pilot and as a player. At that point, you're potentially in a lot more trouble because you don't know anything about them. They know everything about how you're fitted, how you're, uh, how you're fitted, how stable your tank is, what ammo you've got, and what your, what your experience in PvP is. So the easiest way to avoid this situation, don't engage them. If they shoot your MTU, let them shoot your MTU. If you've got enough time to scoop it before they destroy it, go ahead and scoop it. But if not, let them destroy it. If they decide to loot the wreck that you need to complete the mission, just abandon the mission. It's not worth losing your ship over for the sake of your ship. It, it, it's not worth losing your, your ship over for the sake of the mission. So just just let them do whatever they're going to do. If they want to go and steal the wreck, let them steal the wreck. If they want to blow up the MTU, let them blow up the MTU. Just simply warp out of the mission, return to the station, and abandon the mission. One other thing that they will tend to do, and you would be surprised how often this happens, is say hypothetically, you run a mission and you've got to collect a, a report. You've got to re re uh, collect a passenger. You've got to collect something. There is something physical that you need to earn from this mission, and it's in one of those wrecks. What they'll do is they will find the item that you've got that you need to complete your mission, and they will take it. They'll then go back to station and put it on the market for an exorbitant amount of money. So say for instance, the mission requires you to, to turn in a scientist. Well, now they've just stolen the scientist, so you can't possibly turn in that mission. You then look on the market to see if there's one available, and oh look, there's one on the market for a hundred million isk. This is them selling your mission loot back to you. Don't don't spend your money. Don't don't hand over any money for any reason whatsoever. Just abandon the mission and move on. Once you, if you abandon more than I think it's if you abandon more than two missions an hour, you will take a standing hit with that specific faction. Now that sounds like a bad thing, but you can make that standing back up within four or five missions. So for the sake of losing your ship, it's not really worth it. If you are messaged by anyone that tells you that they are part of an organization that enforces the rules of Eve and they go by some their, their, their ruler called James. I'm sure a few of you have already worked out who I'm referring to, but for the sake of this, I'm not gonna give them the advertisement. If you are messaged by someone and they say to you, if you want to continue running missions, you have to buy a permit and then paste this into your bio. Don't buy the permit. They are talking out of their backsides. There is no benefit to you handing them money. They do not honor those things. It is just them trying to scam more money out of you. Do not hand over any money to anyone unless you are getting something physical in return, i.e. they are handing you a ship 
that is worth the value that you're paying for it. They're handing you modules, they're handing you ammo, whatever the case may be, unless there is a transaction happening where you are getting something that is not a made up permit, don't hand them money, okay? It's the only bit of advice that I can give you that hopefully is going to make this whole experience a little easier because the amount of times that I've heard from someone where they've said, you know, I was running missions and I got ganked because someone came into my mission, they were flashing, I shot them and then I died. And that was the only ship I had. It's not worth losing your, losing your stuff over. If someone comes in and takes your stuff, someone comes in, shoots your MTU, leave them to it. Just warp out, go and cancel your mission, pick up a new one and carry on. Let them, let, let them have their little bit of fun. The other thing that I would suggest, don't type in local. That's what they're waiting for. They get off on that kind of thing. They're jonesing for that thing. They want you in local going, you're a big horrible person and you shot my stuff and now I've lost my ship. And they just, they feed on it. So don't, don't give them the ammunition that they need. Just move on. It's not that big of a deal, okay? Hopefully this helps. Hopefully this is going to stop some of you from losing ships. I know inevitably there's going to be someone out there that's going to think, that's ah, fine, I can take them. You can't. You will not win that fight. 100% of the time you will not win that fight because they are more than prepared for whatever you've got hiding up your sleeve. So just be aware, be safe, and enjoy your missions. Okay? Right. Let's get on with it. We're going to undock. And the first thing that we're going to do before we actually warp into our mission is make sure that we've got the right ammo loaded and then we're also going to make sure we've got our tank turned on. One of the biggest things that you need to remember when you are doing this, always make sure that your um, your tank is ready and, and, and set to go into the mission because there are there will be occasions where you will warp into a mission and you will find that you have got uh, aggression straight off the bat. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna load kinetic missiles here. I've also got my D-scan open. Uh, this is mainly to protect myself from combat probes and anyone potentially warping into my mission. If you'd like to know how to open that, simply down here where you see the button for autopilot, just above it is one that's called scanners. Go ahead, click that, and then to the right, you'll see one that says directional scanner. If it opens up, and it opens up in a window where you can see a map, if you press the white square on the directional scanner, you, it will separate that from the map, meaning you can close the map and still continue to have the D-scan open. I usually keep my ranges set between 1 and 5 AU, depending on how much clutter I'm going to encounter. In this case, I know I'm going to encounter a, load, uh, a, lot, of a lot of clutter, like the control towers and stuff like that. So I will simply just set it to 1 AU. This way, when I hit scan, I won't have to worry about uh, seeing anything that's um, further away than I need to worry about. So we're going to turn our tank on now. And we're going to go ahead and walk into the mission. And that's pretty much it. So I will go ahead and speed the next bit up. And once we finish the mission, we will go from there. So enjoy. One important tip when you do land into the mission, be aware of groups. If you can see that they are split off into groups, go ahead and prioritize one group over the other. This means that you can potentially avoid getting yourself into a bigger fight than you're ready to engage. So for instance here, these group have already engaged me, so I'm gonna go ahead and make them my priority first, and I'm gonna approach them, leaving these ones here alone. This means that I can essentially eliminate these without having to worry about taking on too much aggression and without overwhelming my tank. So we'll go ahead, we'll kill those, and then uh, we'll go and move on to the second group. If you need to work out how best to identify them, all you need to do, open up the tactical overlay, and then zoom out, and you can see the separated groups. If there is a lot of them, they may not stay separated for very long, so pay close attention to that, okay?
the reasons why we use a mobile tractor unit because what it can do is it can actually pull in all of the wrecks as I mentioned earlier and loot them all for you so you'll see down here it's conveniently if I open up the uh, mobile tractor unit uh, you can see in here it's actually managed to pull in one two three four five lots of uh, five lots of items outside of the wrecks it's bundled them all up quite nicely for us so that um, if we're going to salvage them we can do so quite easily or if we're running this with a friend we can actually just go ahead and scoop the mobile tractor unit into our cargo hold and it will then go ahead put that back into our cargo hold and create a cargo container in space now when our friend lands on the field they will be able to salvage all of the wrecks that are here and also take the uh, the loot from the cargo hold uh, from the cargo container as well meaning that potentially you're not going to have to sit there and worry about your 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 inventory getting cluttered um, obviously I'm doing this on my own so uh, for that sake we're going to go ahead and uh, pick it up ourselves so yeah we will now head over to the gate and work on the second room okay And that is it, mission complete. We can now go ahead and walk to the station and turn in the mission. So we'll go do that next and I'll explain what happens afterwards. Okay, so we've made it to the station. Uh, we now need to turn our mission in. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start a conversation with the agent. And we're gonna go ahead and view the mission. Now you'll see here, for completing the mission, we're gonna get 409,000 ISK along with 1,176 loyalty points. As a bonus reward for completing it within two hours, we're also going to get an additional 456,000. Now, the reason why people tend to run these missions is not only just because of the financial gain from it by running missions, but also because of the loyalty point gain. And the reason for that is because, and I'll go ahead and complete this, it'll credit me with my, uh, my ISK that I've earned, and also give me the 1,176 loyalty points. Over here, on the right hand side you'll see a loyalty point store if you click on this you can actually go ahead and redeem those loyalty points for a variety of different things now you see here it says i've got 278,903 loyalty points and if you go down you'll see that i can redeem a drake navy issue blueprint for 200,000 uh, loyalty points and a hundred million isk we can obviously continue down here and you can see that there are a variety of different things um, once they're obviously no longer, in this case, readied out, but once they are available, you can actually go ahead and pick them up. The main reason that people will tend to do this is usually for the uh, implants and the blueprints that you get from them, because once manufactured or sold, you can turn a fairly decent profit. In the, say, in, in the case of this one, if we go ahead and show info on the uh, 905 light missile launcher, um, uh, implant. This gives us a five percent bonus to uh, a five percent bonus to damage from light missiles, and if we view the market details on that, currently they are being sold for 160 million, and we can buy them for 79 million. So you go ahead and up those onto the market. Granted, this price does seem a little high, but then looking at the market buyers, currently they're being bought for 1.6 million. That may seem that they're not really that they're not really turning that much of a profit. However, these are basically just some lucky chances that are thinking someone's going to sell it, thinking that you know it's the best deal that they can get. 
it's not. You're obviously not gonna sell it for more than you paid. So in this instance, I would be able to buy three of those, put them on the market. Once they sell, that would be essentially 460 million isk that I've then made just through uh, farming loyalty points. And that tends to be the main reason that people run the missions is for the loyalty point gains and the things you get from it. So yeah, that is it. That is pretty much mission running in a cyclone. Hopefully it's helpful. Okay, on to the next bit. That is, that is everything you need to know uh, when it comes to running level three missions. Um, like I said, utilize the resources with regards to uh, the Eve Uni link. It will give you um, uh, the best possible advice when it comes to running missions. I could sit here and run through all the different varieties of missions that there are. Unfortunately, we would be here for ages because there are hundreds, literally hundreds of different types of missions. So the best advice I can give you is use the Eve, Eve Uni website, uh, paste the mission in there and look at what it tells you to do. Keep an eye on any triggers and any that you do come across. If there, if there are triggers there, make sure you leave them till last. With regards to target priorities, if you've got, say, uh, frigates in there and you know for a fact that it says that they're going to be potentially warp scrambling you or stasis webbing you, um, make them a priority unless they're the trigger. Never get yourself into too much, um, too much of a, a, a of a fight. If you need to, by all means, feel free to walk out. And um, don't forget, with regards to the um, uh, griefers and PVP stuff, uh, again, if someone warps into your site, it's not worth your ship to engage them. So just don't, okay? And um, that's it. Hopefully this video has proven helpful to you. If it has, please hit the subscribe button. Like I said earlier, we are so close to the uh, to the 1000 mark. It is unreal. I don't know what we're gonna do yet. Um, so again, if you've got any suggestions for what we should do for the 1000 mark, let me know. Um, again, if, the, if it's been helpful, um, hitting the like button really helps. It means that I know it's worked, I know it's helped you, um, and on the same point, it means that you know you're enjoying the content and I can I can I can keep doing more of it. So with that in mind, if you have got any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments or you can join the Discord. The links for that are in the description below. You can also uh, join me on stream. I stream every Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, starting at half past seven UK time. And um, yeah, we do PVP on Fridays and we do ISK making stuff on Saturdays. So feel free to stop by on whichever one of those days is, is most appropriate. Thursdays is more my day to kind of just sit and chill out and chat with people, answer questions, maybe play a couple of games of Need for Speed or Forza or whatever kind of feels like it'll be fun that day. Um, so yeah, if you've got any questions, please by all means feel free to stop by with the stream. And um, yeah, that's it for me. I'm off and I will see you all on the next one. Until then, have fun, fly safe, and don't do anything I wouldn't do, which I'll be honest with you, doesn't leave you with a lot. Enjoy, bye.